today we will see how a young couple who were engaged and were preparing for their marriage met with storms in their lives mary and joseph were engaged to one another and they were preparing to get married both of them were young in the teen they were in the teenagers they were both excited they had their own plans their own desires they were very happy and suddenly one day the angel of the lord angel gabriel appeared to mary and told her about god's plan of salvation and how she would be the key person to bring the savior into this world mary was not yet married she was only engaged how could she bring the savior into this world if we were in place of mary what would be our reaction what would be our decision But look at Mary. She just submitted to God's plan of salvation and said yes. What is submit or submission? Submission simply means to cancel my mission and get into God's mission. It means to cancel my plans, my desires, my ways, my will, and walk according to God's plan. and his will and his ways even if i have to be stoned to death i don't care even if joseph has to leave me i don't care even if my parents have to forsake me i don't care if god has made a plan for me surely it is for my good i will do what god wants me to do mary did not tell the angels give me some time let me think over it i will have to ask my father jokim i will have to ask for permission from my mother ann and most importantly of all my fiance joseph if they say okay i will agree with you mary could be stoned to death for being pregnant out of wedlock that was a big risk that she took her name her reputation her family reputation her marriage was all at stake she is a teenager she is unable to make a decision such as this but she does not bother if god has planned it for me she saying i will not hesitate i will do what god wants me to do i will walk according to his plans she knows that god has a great plan for her plans to prosper her and not to harm her and to give her a future full of hope and as soon as mary said yes to god's plan of salvation the word of god that the angel gabriel spoke became flesh in her and she conceived anyone who has no children and desiring for a child seek the word of god let that word become flesh in you now ever since the angel gabriel came and spoke the word of god to mary there were only problems there were trials in her life and also in the life of joseph before we go ahead i want to ask you where was the announcement made by angel gabriel where did the angel gabriel come and announce the birth of the son of god in the temple in the synagogue in the church during mass where was the announcement made the announcement was made in mary's house 
the son of god is to be born shouldn't the announcement have been made in the church the king of kings was to be born but even king herod was not aware of it a savior was to be born but even the priests the sadducees the pharisees and the teachers of the law were not aware of his birth god sent the angel gabriel not in the church not in the palace but to mary's house to proclaim the good news when the angel gabriel came and spoke the word and mary said yes the word became flesh in her womb she was filled with the holy spirit and she went in that situation to visit her cousin elizabeth who was pregnant and in her sixth month now why did the angel gabriel give mary the news that her cousin elizabeth is pregnant mary had asked the angel gabriel how can this be since i am a virgin The angel had told her in Luke chapter 1 verses 35 and 36 The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the most high will overshadow you So the holy one to be born will be called the son of God And he goes on to say even your relative is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month the angel gabriel gives her a testimony that elizabeth who was old and unable to conceive she was barren is now pregnant and in her sixth month this was told to mary so that she may believe that god had sent him and that nothing is impossible with god even though elizabeth was pregnant for 6 months she did not disclose it to anyone and that is the reason why mary her cousin was not aware of it and this was revealed to mary so she may believe that is why it is so very important to testify to share your testimony with others you never know whom who will be blessed with this testimony we need to tell others what the good lord has done for us and how he has had mercy on us this can build faith in others who are going through trials troubles tribulations and situations and circumstances that are beyond their control when a woman is pregnant she has morning sickness she is continuously vomiting but here we find mother mary going to serve her cousin elizabeth she is not bothered about herself her health she herself is pregnant she needs to take care of the baby or she could have a miscarriage but she is so filled with love that she goes to serve her cousin and the path is not easy she has to go through the hilly region to get to her cousin's house one slip of her leg or the donkey's leg on which she may have travel and she could lose a baby but mary had a servant like attitude she served her cousin elizabeth for 3 months till she gives birth to john the baptist after 3 months she comes home and now she has a big problem to face her she has to face her family she has to face joseph who is trying to divorce her quietly 
but she is not bothered she is not worried about what to tell them because she knows that god is with her she knew if god has given her this mission it is god's responsibility to answer all the questions of her family members the villagers and joseph and her his family it is god who will protect her and take care of her she does not have to go around convincing everybody her family members the villagers and joseph and his family about the annunciation that is god's work it is god's plan that she is doing she is only doing god's will and god sends an angel in a dream to joseph and tells him to take mary as his wife and joseph obeys the word of god and takes mary home as his wife now mary is in her ninth month and there is a decree an order that all the world should be registered a census has to be taken and every person had to go to their own town to be registered so joseph also went up from galilee to judea to the city of david which is called bethlehem to be registered with mary and they are going through the hilly region again and not in a land cruiser or a mercedes benz but on a donkey now is that right comfortable especially for a pregnant woman who is in her ninth month how many times the donkey's legs may have slipped while climbing the mountain there were no tarred roads like we have in those days they just had dusty pathways yet she is not complaining not grumbling not murmuring how much we would have complained grumbled and murmured if we were in her place poor joseph would have had to face so many days and nights of cold war so now when they reach bethlehem there is another problem standing in front of them there is no room for them to stay all the inns are full mary is due to deliver her baby and there is no place for her to stay or to deliver the baby finally joseph manages to find a place not in a five star hotel or in the palace but in a manger and mary gives birth to the son of god in that manger the angel had said to mary you will bear a son and he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the lord god will give to him the throne of his father david and he will reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end Now Jesus is supposed to sit on the throne of David but he is born in a stable instead of a palace The king of kings and the lord of lords was born in a manger as a poor boy 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says For you know the grace of our lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich jesus became poor so that we may be rich jesus does not want us to live in poverty god made jesus poor for our sake so that we may be rich If anyone is poor anyone is going through financial problems take the scripture and say it over and over again and you will see the glory of God The first people to get the news of the birth of Jesus were not the Jews not the Pharisees not the Sadducees 
nor the priests, the high priests or the chief priests, but they were simple shepherds living out in the fields nearby. They were keeping a watch over their flocks at night. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. Even the angels rejoiced at the birth of Jesus. Though the angels are always in the presence of God, for the very first time, they saw God in the human form. They saw him as a man. They were so happy to see God in the form of man and they rejoiced and they sang glory to God in the highest and on earth people, peace to people of goodwill. Now as soon as the angels left, the shepherds hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Verse 17. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. What are the things that we are treasuring up in our hearts? What are we storing in our hearts? What he said, what she said, what he did, what she did. We need to treasure the good things and dispose of the bad things. We need to treasure the word of God in our heart. The Bible says in Psalms 19 verse 10. The word of God is more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. And Psalm 119 verse 72 says, the word of God is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. What do we treasure more? Gold and silver or the word of God? On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus. The name that the angel had given him before. He was conceived. When Jesus was taken to the Jerusalem to be presented to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice, Simeon, a righteous and devout man on whom the Holy Spirit had come, came up to Jesus. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Messiah. So moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what the law had told, what was required by the law, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God saying,
Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Joseph and Mary marveled at what was said about Jesus. And verse 34, then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Simeon represented the law. As soon as law went out, grace came in. There was a prophetess named Anna in the temple. She was 84 years old. She had lived with her husband for only seven years after her marriage. And then she was a widow. And she never left the temple, but worshipped day and night, fasting and praying. As soon as Simeon law, that was who represented law, went out, Anna, who represented grace, came in. She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. After Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law, they returned to Galilee, where the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. After that, the three wise men saw a bright new shining star, and they followed the star. On the way, they lose track and reach the palace of Herod. And they inquire about the king of the Jews that is to be born. Herod asks his wise men and they tell him he is born in Bethlehem. So Herod tells the wise men, go to Bethlehem and then come and tell me so that I may go and worship him. Now did Herod really want to worship him? Herod was scared of this little child who would one day take over his throne. And that is why he wanted to kill him. And that is why he tells the wise men, come back to me and tell me where he is. For Herod, his throne is more precious than Jesus. After the wise men visited Jesus and offered their gifts, they returned to their countries through a different route. When Herod realized that the three wise men had deceived him, he ordered every male child to be killed. And the, again the angel, Gabriel, angel comes and speaks to Joseph. He tells Joseph, take the child and the mother and flee to Egypt. And the Bible says, in the middle of the night, Joseph takes them and is fleeing the place. And they stay there in Egypt till Herod is dead. Now after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. And the angel said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. And so they came back and settled in Nazareth. Every time we find that the angel of God speaks to Joseph, 
we find Joseph sleeping. He is speaking to him in the dream. And in the middle of the night, he is taking Mary and the child and they are going. That is the reason why Joseph is also called as a sleeping saint. When Jesus was 12 years old, Mary, Joseph and Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, Jesus stayed back in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. His parents were unaware. The ladies would travel together in one group, while the men would travel separately in another group. So Joseph thought Jesus is with Mary. Mary thought Joseph, Jesus is with Joseph. After they had traveled for a day, they realized that Jesus was not with both of them and neither was he with their relatives and friends. And so they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. Again, they have to travel one more day to go back to Jerusalem. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And Mary said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And Jesus replied, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He studied the scriptures, the Torah. Until Jesus grows, there is no mention about Joseph in the Bible. Probably he passed away. He lived a life pleasing to God. Though he faced all these storms, he was patient. He trusted in God and his plans for his life. One day Jesus and his disciples attended a wedding at Cana in Galilee. And Jesus' mother was also there. When the wine was over, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no wine. The wine is over. Just like all women, Mary is also in the kitchen helping the hosts. And as she is there, she notices that the wine has run out. She knows the reputation of this family is at stake. People will start gossiping about this family. Even before the host family could approach her, she goes to Jesus and tells him they have no wine. Even before the family tells her, she goes ahead and intercedes for that family and tells, Je tells Jesus they have no wine. In the same way, even before we pray to Mother Mary to intercede for us, she has already gone ahead and interceded for us. She knows what we need. She knows what we lack and she goes ahead and intercedes for us like a good mother. She is our mother who cares for all our needs. Jesus gave her to us as our mother when he was hanging on the cross. In John chapter 19 verses 26 and 27. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, 
here is your mother from that time on this disciple took her into his home and now since we are the disciples of jesus mother mary is our mother and she cares for the needs of her children we don't have to go and beg her to intercede for us she has already interceded for us with jesus even before we could approach her every time we pray to her or ask her to intercede for us she gives us an instruction we will see that in a while this was the second instance that jesus calls his mother woman the first was when mother mary interceded on behalf of the wedding family and told jesus they have no wine and jesus replied in john chapter 2 was for woman why do you involve me my hour has not yet come jesus had not yet performed any miracle he was just beginning his ministry and mary gives him his first assignment to which jesus says woman why do you involve me my hour has not yet come we studied that jesus was obedient to his parents and suddenly we find him disrespectful he is calling his mother woman when jesus called his mother woman he was referring to the woman about whom god had spoken in the garden of eden god had told satan in genesis chapter 3:15 i will put enmity between you and the woman between your offspring and hers he will crush your head and you will strike his heel jesus was telling the people at the wedding reception mary is that woman about whom god had spoken in the garden of eden and i am that seed i am that offspring of that woman who is going to crush the head of satan jesus was not disrespecting his mother but he was glorifying her what if nowadays children have to call their mothers woman i'm sure all the mothers would have screamed and shouted at their child for calling them woman but look at mary she is calm she is patient and she tells the servants in verse 5 do whatever he tells you do whatever he tells you for the servants to do what jesus told them must have sounded foolish but they had no option they were servants and servants in those days were slaves they could be killed for not obeying the master or his guests only when they did what jesus told them to do they were the first people to witness the first miracle of jesus jesus had told the servants to fill the jars that were outside in the open with water these jars were kept outside for the visitors to wash their hands and feet to freshen up and jesus wants them to fill these jars with water they need wine and jesus is telling them to fill water this is something ridiculous everyone knows that to make wine you need grapes or ginger etc nowadays wine is made of many different things the servants must have wondered what kind of a man is this is asking us to fill water in these big dirty jars those jars must be filled with sand insects must be roaming in them cows buffaloes and camels must have drunk water from them and jesus wants them to fill these jars with water this man is going to waste our time and our labor but god's ways are higher than our ways his plans are better than our plans if he has told you to fill water fill water don't try to reason out 
Only when you fill water, you will be able to see the water turn into wine. If you want your prayers to be answered, do what Jesus tells you to do. Every time we go to Mother Mary and pray to her and tell her to intercede for us, she instructs us to do whatever Jesus tells us to do. But how many of us do what Jesus tells us to do? We want shortcuts. I will pray, I will kneel, I will burn incense, I will put garlands and flowers and candles. I will feed the poor, donate to the orphanages and the old aged homes. But please don't tell me to do what Jesus tells me to do. But the servants had no option. They did what Jesus told them to do. And Jesus told them to draw some water out and take it to the master of the banquet. Now this instruction was more difficult than the first. This could mean death to the servants. They know they have filled water in the jars. And now Jesus is saying, draw the water out and take it to the master of the banquet. If he tastes and sees that it is water, they will be killed for fooling around with him. But again, they have no option. They risked their lives and they did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had now been turned into wine. This was the first of the many miracles that Jesus performed. And this miracle started the ministry of Jesus. He went around proclaiming the good news to every town and village and healing their sick. The Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, the teachers of the law, all the religious people, when they saw the popularity of Jesus, they began to envy him. They began to plot against him. They tried to trap him and put him to death. Jesus has to bear persecution, insults, abuse, spitting upon him. He is whipped, scourged, crowned with thorns. A cross has been put on his shoulders and he has to carry it all the way up Mount Calvary. His apostles and disciples who had been with him for three and a half years desert him. Peter, his favorite disciple, denies him. Judas, his treasurer, betrays him. He is nailed to the cross between two robbers and dies in front of his mother who is watching all this. She had every right to demand an explanation from God. God had told her through the angel Gabriel, You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And here Mary is seeing that Jesus is not on the throne, but on the cross. God had said he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And here he is facing the end of his life. But Mary trusts in the plan of God. If he has said it, he will surely do it. Nothing is impossible with God. In the midst of all her sufferings, her focus is on God's plan of salvation. She is not looking at her situations and circumstances. She knows that what she is seeing is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. All through her life and through Joseph's life, there was no peace at all. They faced storms after storms, but 
through the midst of the storms, their focus was on God and his plans for their lives. Let's close our eyes for the final prayer. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for teaching us through the examples of Mother Mary and Joseph. Lord, help us to be always calm and patient like them. When we encounter storms, Lord, just as you were with Mary and Joseph all through their storms, you are with us also in the midst of our storms. Lord, you are the king over the floods. You are the one who lifts us and makes us walk on the stormy waters. Lord, help us to have a servant-like attitude, just like Mary, who though she was pregnant, went to serve her cousin Elizabeth, who was also pregnant and in her sixth month. Thank you for revealing to us that Mother Mary is our mother who cares for the needs of her children. She intercedes for us even before we pray to her. Help us always to be obedient to her instructions and do what Jesus tells us to do. Lord, most of the time we fail to do what Jesus tells us to do. Because it looks foolish. But Lord, your ways are higher than our ways. Your plans are better than our plans. Today, O oh Lord, we make a decision to walk according to your plans. Lord, we are ready to cancel our missions, our plans, our desires, our will, and we are ready to do what you will. Lord, you are our father, and we are your children. It is you who will take care of us all through our lives. Lord, you said, in this world, we will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for you have overcome the world. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.